welcome. In this video, it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna break this down into a few sections and I'm also gonna upload those sections separately on YouTube. So if you're not looking for the whole, uh, the whole explanation, you might just be looking for what ISO is, then I'm gonna put that as a separate video. But in this video here, we're gonna be talking about uh, what ISO is, what shutter speed is, what aperture is, and what frame rate is. So as I said, I'll be uploading four of those separately. So if you are just looking for what shutter speed is, check the links in the description below. I'll have all of them there and I'll put them in as uh, cards on YouTube as well. So one of the corners, there'll be a little question mark thingy. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So first we're gonna talk about ISO. And basically ISO is in a really basic form. It's the sensitivity of light that your camera sensor has. So back in the day, back in the day, um, when you're talking about actual film, they came in different grades of ISO. So what that meant is, is how sensitive the film was to the, to the light, basically. So if you had a low number ISO, so something like ISO 100, it wouldn't be as sensitive to light, which means it would take effectively take longer to expose um, the correct exposure, I guess. Then you can get film that was maybe ISO 1200 that would expose very quickly. Now, that may sound really good, but the only problem with uh, a higher ISO is that it also introduces grain. So you get graininess in your footage um, and it doesn't look so good. So it's always best to shoot on a lower ISO if you can. Um, so I always try and shoot on the GH4, the lowest ISO is 200. You can get 100, but I don't think it's one of the native ISO, so it doesn't look as good. So I shoot ISO 200. The only reason I boost it up is if all of my other settings are as adjusted as much as they can be, but the image is still dark. Then I last thing usually is bumping up the ISO, unless there's a, a certain effect I need to go for by having an aperture set a certain way, which we'll get into later. Um, but yeah, I usually try and shoot in the lowest ISO because it does produce the best results quality wise. So yeah, again, it's basically just how sensitive your camera sensor is to the light. So the lower the number, the less sensitive it is, so the darker your image will, will effectively be. And the higher the number, the faster the camera can absorb the light. So picture it like a sponge absorbing water. If you have a really coarse thick sponge, it's gonna absorb the water a lot slower. So that would be, let's say ISO 1200, but a sponge isn't gonna do as good, good a job. It's gonna be a bit rougher. But if you have a sponge that is um, smaller or whatever, it's gonna absorb less water, but it's probably gonna do a better job. So I don't know if that analogy works at all, but basically that's what ISO is. So now we'll talk about shutter speed. Um, shutter speed, so picture almost like a curtain in front of your camera's lens that opens and closes at a certain speed. So the faster your shutter speed, the faster it's gonna open and close. The slower your shutter speed, the slower it's gonna open and close. So the two main differences, or the main differences between a slow and fast shutter speed is a slow shutter speed, you will see motion blur. So because the shutter, the curtain is open longer, it's got more time for the blur, for your camera to take the image of the blur before it shuts again. For a fast shutter speed, it's gonna be a lot sharper, um, but it's, it's a lot sharper, but it's also a lot more unnatural looking. Um, so the curtain will, the say curtain will open and the image will move and it will shut again. So it's a very, very sharp image, but it's also very, it's also very stroby. So it's kind of a very unnatural looking. For the best cinematic, um, best cinematic look, usually I shoot in 25 frames per second, and we are going to get into frames, uh, frame rate soon. So don't worry about that but 25 frames per second, and usually you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So, you know, 1 50th if you can get that on your camera, or 1 48th, whatever's the closest. You want that because that produces the most cinematic result. Because as humans, we are used to seeing natural motion blur when we do watch movies. You probably notice that sometimes you watch certain shows on TV or action, not action, but sports broadcasts and things like that, where it's very unnatural looking. It looks so real that to our eyes, it's fake. It's very, it's a really weird feeling, but it's just what we're used to seeing. Um, so yeah, if you're shooting action sports or something really fast, maybe shooting a car commercial or something moving quickly, you'll probably opt for a bit of a higher shutter speed um, because it will capture it a bit sharper rather than blurring everything. Um, but yeah, usually to shoot cinematically, you double your shutter speed from whatever your frame rate is. So I hope that it helped what, explain what shutter speed is. Basically in a nutshell, it's 
how fast the curtain opens and closes or how slow the curtain opens and closes it directly relates to how blurry or how much motion blur or how much sharpness is in your image so as i said a slow shutter speed is going to give you a bit more motion blur as a faster shutter speed is going to be you know a bit sharper with those movements but again it does, can look a bit unnatural sometimes so all right so now we're going to get into aperture or f-stop so this this one is probably the most confusing um, simply because the smaller so first of all let me explain apertures basically so we have that curtain i spoke about just before about shutter speeds uh, aperture is the the iris of the camera so it's how much light gets through uh gets through the lens basically and hits your sensor so it's picture like a disc that's that small or that big, whatever, that's how it works. So it will open and close, or sometimes they stay open as you uh, expose your photo or your video. So with f-stop or aperture, the reason it's a weird one is because the smaller number actually means a bigger hole, and the bigger number actually means a smaller hole. So it can get very confusing. So if I was shooting on say f11, which is at an f-stop of 11, the hole might be really small like that. But if I'm shooting at an f-stop of 1, 1 1.8 or something like that it's it's a lot larger so the smaller the number the larger the the hole which means more light so the two effects basically you get from this is shooting on a, a small number aperture but a large hole so say we're shooting f 1.8 which is a large hole and small number that allows lots of light to come in and what it also allows is a shallow depth of field so what that means is something closer to the camera or whatever you're focused on is in focus and anything behind that um, is out of focus. So that's what happens when you have a shallow depth of field and that happens when you have a lot of light entering the camera. If you narrow your aperture, meaning use a higher number, so let's just say we go with f11, then you might be shooting through a hole that small, everything becomes, so it lets in less light, but everything becomes a bit flatter. So overall your background will start to be in focus as well as the foreground um, more so. So this is really good when you're shooting on a gimbal like a Ronin M or a Steadicam when you don't have a follow focus system. It's really good because almost everything is in focus. The only downside to that is sometimes if it's dark and you do shrink your aperture or shrink the hole, increase the number, uh, it can be too dark to shoot with. So sometimes you gotta just play with all your settings, ISO, everything to try and get a balanced effect. And sometimes there's nothing you can do if it's just too dark, you will have to manually focus or you will just have to get some lighting or something involved. So. Depth of field look is really cool, but again, it's a lot harder to gain focus because you do have to, um, the focal, focal planes are a lot further apart, meaning your subject can be in focus and your background might not be, um, but that's a really cool effect sometimes. So basically that's what aperture is, smaller number, bigger hole, bigger number, smaller hole. Hope that helped. So now we're going to talk about frame rate. And basically all frame rate is, is how many, how many frames your camera will shoot in one second, or like that can be video or photography, very similar, uh, but more so it's used in video. So the cinematic, cinematic standard in Australia or Europe is 25 frames per second. I think in America and US and some other countries, it's uh, 23.978 or 24.978. So here in Australia, we shoot 25 frames per second meaning as I said in the shutter speed video, um, on my, sorry, yeah, in the shutter speed video, my shutter speed would be 50 because it's double my frame rate. That gives you the most cinematic look. Now the way to imagine frame rate is to go back to the old, go back to the film days where you have a strip of film and you see those little windows. Basically what it means is if you're shooting 25 frames per second, it means 25 of those windows will pass through the camera sensor per second. So when you think about that, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy the amount of film you would have gone through if you're shooting on film. And even these days with the whole data SD cards, it's, it's amazing that you can obviously fill a card up very quickly with the amount of information being passed to it. So the faster the, what normally if you're editing in, say you're editing in a 25 frames per second timeline using Adobe Premiere or your editing software, if you record a clip at 50 frames per second on your camera, when you bring it into your editing software, usually it'll play just as normal and what it'll do is it'll drop half the frames. So you've got 50 frames in a 25, so let's do it this way, 50 frames 
and you've got a 25 frame per second timeline, it'll drop half the frames to match the 25. But the cool thing about that is because you do have 50 frames, you can use slow motion. So you can slow that 50 frame clip uh, down to 50%, so it's half the speed, so you get half speed slow motion, and you don't use any drop frames or anything like that. So this is a concept that when I first started with video editing, I was wondering why I was shooting something at 25 frames, editing it at 25 frames, and wondering why when I use the slow motion effect in my editing software, it would work, but it would be really jittery, things would look weird, some of the backgrounds would start moving with the um, subject, and I always wondered why, and it's because the software is actually trying to build those frames because um, they don't exist, technically. Because if you shoot in 25 and you edit in 25, you can go slow motion, you're adding frames, so the software has to make up frames to fit that. So basically, if I shot at 25 and edit in 25 and I slow mo my clip down 50%, you would have to make up half those frames to, to bring it up to the 50% of slow motion. So you will get some weird things going on. Not always, depends how it's shot. So if you do know you're gonna be doing something in slow motion, then do try and shoot at a higher frame rate um, for later. But you really do have to know what you're shooting at the time because you don't want a clip that was supposed to look cinematic. You don't want that shot at 50 frames per second because it can look a bit weird. Um, and if you do put it in your editor and it drops the frames, you can lose a bit of the, the quality, I guess, or the data that you originally captured. So it is better to just shoot what you need when you need it. And that can be really hard when it's just run and gun type shooting. But if you have a script or whatever and you're shooting a short film or anything like that, you will be able to look at it and say, okay, this scene we want slow motion. So we'll shoot it in 50 frames per second or whatever you want. The higher frame rate you choose, the slower motion you can get. So even if you shoot 120 frames per second, you can go even slower. So basically that's the best thing to do. If you're not sure whether you're gonna use the slow-mo or normal motion of that clip, if possible, shoot it twice in both. If not, then it is possible to bring a 50 frame per second uh, clip down to 25 frames and it won't be too bad. So it'll just might look a bit strange and not as cinematic, a little bit, the motion's a little bit too fluid. It's very, very similar to shutter speed and they're both very closely related because um, they both similarly do the same thing. How many, it's basically how it captures the frame. So um, I think that's all really all we're gonna talk about frame rate. Um, without getting into it too much, because then you got progressive, interlaced, and all those types of things. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. So everyone, I hope that video helped you. Um, as I said, I will be putting these in separate videos, just like what is ISO, what is shutter speed, etc. And I'll have this one long video on there as well. So for those who want to learn the whole lot, they can. And for those who only need to know, or only need a hand with ISO or aperture or whatever, can just go visit those videos. So I hope this really helped. Please subscribe. Um, please comment if you like and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.